This is a couple of examples of Stokes' theorem. Uh, one of them, well, we discussed both of them in class on Friday. This is mainly for people who weren't there. But uh, So I'm going to go through the one we discussed in class on the computer that I came up with, and then we also talked about number seven from the book, and I did it out by hand, and what I want to add to that is some computer pictures and a little bit of insight about what's going on with the vector field in that one. It's kind of hard to picture without the computer. So here is uh, the first example. Uh, F is the pinwheel vector field brought into three dimensions. So it's just circulating in the IJ direction. Curl's easy to take. We talked about this. It's just 2K, so the curl is always pointing upward. So here, if I rotate this around, this is looking at it uh, down along the z-axis, and then I can rotate it back and see if I look at it sideways, it's just, uh, let's do it sideways, then it's just rotating around. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a surface. This is the same exact vector field. It may not look very, very similar, but it's the same exact vector field, but just graphed on a surface, which has a hump on the right and a pit on the left, and I'm going to bring in the surface in a second. And what we're, what we're trying to do with Stokes' theorem is we're trying to relate two things. We're trying to say, what's the total circulation around the boundary of this surface? In this case, it's a square. Certainly looks like that's uh, going to be positive, as long as we use the orientation where we go around counterclockwise, looked at it from above. What we're doing is we're going to relate that to the individual little bits of circulation around the whole surface. And so I'm going to bring in the surface. Okay, so here's the surface. And um, what's the colors here are exactly the crucial thing for Stokes theorem, which is on each cell, each little uh, rectangle or little parallelogram or whatever the sh cell shapes are, each little cell of this thing what we're doing is we're taking this vector field and we're calculating the circulation of that vector field around the boundary of that little cell. And the, the real deep idea of Stokes' theorem is actually a very simple idea. It's we saw it with Green's theorem. is that if we take the circulation around all the little cells and add them up, then that's going to give a cancellation on every boundary, every uh, internal boundary, every time a, two cells share the same little segment. The only things that won't cancel are on the outside. And so if we can find an efficient way to sum up the little circulations on all the little pieces, then that's going to be an alternate way to calculate the circulation around the boundary. Now that seem, might seem ludicrous that, that we could find an efficient enough way, but it, we can. Because what you discover, and this is the part that I didn't really talk about explicitly about Stokes' theorem, you discover is that it's very much analogous to what we do with Green's theorem. If you take a really tiny little cell, and take the microscope and take a tiny little cell and look at the circulations, then in fact you can get it by taking the curl, just some derivatives, partial derivatives of the components of this blue vector field, and dotting it with the normal vector to the surface. So we're, I'll show you a picture of that in a second. Um, what, we're, what I want to convince you of here is look at this and say, okay, if this vector field is always swirling around counterclockwise, then the circulation around like the top of this guy is going to be pretty significant because that is a loop that goes around in the same direction. Similarly out here, these, loop, these loops are all flat. They're exactly in the right orientation to pick up a, a big contribution for the, the flux. And that's why it's these deep red colors where there's a big contribution. Similarly at the bottom of this, of this pit, there's a big contribution. Where there's not a big contribution is where the surface is getting very steep because that's where the vector field is more going th across the the uh, the boundary of this blue region, not circulating around it. It's not going circulating in up and down direction. It's circulating in an x y direction, and that doesn't match up with how I'm measuring the circulation on that point, on that that part of the surface. Now here is uh, what we bring in to do that calculation efficiently. Here's the normal vector to the surface. That's just the vector field. Here's the surface. So this is actually. The, the easiest thing to picture of all the, the elements of Stokes' theorem, because once you have the surface, you can kind of picture the normal vector. Um, and But what we're really doing is we're comparing that normal vector to the curl. And so the curl vector field, let me bring that in. Because I chose a really simple example, the curl vector field, I evaluate the surface, is just 2K. That's always pointing upward. And so what we're doing is instead of trying to directly calculate the circulation around one of these little grid boxes of the original vector field. We first take some partial derivatives, which is a fairly straightforward process, to calculate the curl vector field. 
And then what we, we what we notice is that when that is basically perpendicular to the surface, that is the, exactly the places where the curl, where the circulation was big, like down here, up here, all around the edge. And it's where the, the curl vector field is not very close to perpendicular to the surface, where it's not flowing through the surface very aggressively. That corresponds to exactly where the circulation was low. And so instead of trying to do circulation calculations on all these boxes, which would be horrible, we do a flux calculation of a different vector field, of the curl vector field of the original guy. And that gives us the same answer. And that's the thing you kind of have to believe to make Stokes' theorem um, uh, a believable thing in terms of um, a generalization of Green's theorem. In the Green's theorem, we didn't have the ability to make the surface bubble up and down. We didn't have to worry about these direction issues of which way is something curling. And does that match the way the surface is going at any particular point? But with Stokes, you actually do have to do that. But still, the idea is as long as you believe that that's true on the microscopic level, that that's giving us uh, the right kind of calculation for the local circulations, then the fact that the, the, the local circulations added to the global circulation is actually uh, just exactly as in the proof of, proof of Green's theorem. Um, so that's, that's one picture. Now, um, let me give you another one. This is problem number seven. Hopefully you, you did look at it. Even if you got stuck, this should be pretty helpful. Here's the vector field uh, for that one. It's definitely a kind of a weirder vector field. Um, it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on. This is the vector field through all space. And now, like I did in the, original, in the other one, I'm going to just look at this region. So this is this triangle. Um, we start out with a curve. It's the triangle with these vertices up here. One, you know, zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, zero. And to use Stokes theorem here, what we do is we bring in as simple as possible of a surface that interpolates between those. And here it is edge on, here it is face on. It's just a triangle. Just let's p look at these all lie in a plane. And so let's t take the, the triangular region in the plane spanned by that. One of the cool things we discussed briefly in class about Stokes theorem is that you could actually pick any surface here and it would still work. And that's a weird thing, is that two different surfaces, as long as they have the same boundary curve, they will have the same flux integral of the curl of a vector field. And we'll, we'll definitely talk about that more. But um, now let's just talk about this particular example. So let's go on. OK, so this is, it's still hard to tell. What you want to be able to do, especially with, if you're sitting in front of a computer, I'd like to be evil, even be able to predict whether this, this circulation that they're trying to calculate is positive or negative. So here it is looking from above. And it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like these arrows are a bit longer than these guys. And so maybe there's some net circulation clockwise, maybe. And remember, they're supposed to, we're supposed to orient the curve counterclockwise as viewed from above. So I would guess that maybe the circulation is negative. Now let, let me remind you what the formulas are here. F is x plus i squared i plus y plus c squared j plus z plus x squared k. And if you take the curl of that, uh, it's this, minus 2z i plus minus 2xj minus 2yk. And if you look at the curl calculation, the x, i, y, j, and zk didn't calculate, contribute at all. And that's not surprising, because x, i, y, j, zk is the radial vector field. That doesn't curl at all. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete that. That can't possibly have any contribution to curl or circulation or anything like that. And so what if I graph just the part y squared i plus z squared j plus x squared k? So that's what I do uh, in, let's see if I can get the next picture here. This is a different vector field, but it should have exactly the same circulation and the same curl. And so it should be equivalent in terms of Stokes theorem. And that's a really cool simplification to be able to make. And this clearly is curling around clockwise. And we should get a negative number as our final answer. OK, so not too much time left. Let's go through the rest. Here's the surface put in, like I did before. That's that surface that we're doing, doing the circulation around. And again, uh, we'd like to convince ourselves that even locally, that we get a, a negative circulation. Well, here's the normal vector. That's very simple. If you put in the normal vector here, it's just i plus j plus k. That's the best for normal vector to use. And then that's with, it, with the surface. And this looks like the original picture, but it's not really. This is the curl. If you actually calculate that curl vector and graph it, it turns out it's always pointing. It's got some swirliness in itself to it, which we don't care about. That would be like the curl of the curl. That's complicated. But it's always pointing generally opposite to that normal vector. And if you do the calculation, you get a very simple answer. You get minus 1, I believe, for the, the total integral of the curl, which is equal to 
the circulation, and I better stop there.